You're listening to the Yoga for Balance podcast. I'm your host, Heather Jurdy. Thank you for tuning in. This week on the podcast, I have Juan Valtierra of My Hidden Potential. We speak about the process of awakening and Juan really opens up about his own process and path to transformation. I hope that you will enjoy this week's episode and as always, thank you so much for listening. Hello and happy new moon week. Happy first week of June. I am here on the Yoga for Balance podcast with my friend Juan from My Hidden Potential. Welcome to the show, Juan. Hi. Happy to be here. Thank you for taking your time out. We're here at the beautiful Harvest Wellness Center in Chula Vista, a state-of-the-art facility here um, down in South Bay, San Diego, where they are bringing wellness to the community here. It's a really cool concept, and Juan and I work together here. I'm doing the yoga, and you're doing some more of the fitness classes. Mm -hmm. So it's been great to meet you here through this beautiful space that Chris Holder has created down in South Bay. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about a really um, special, unique topic we haven't quite covered on the podcast yet, and um, we're going to be talking about awakening and what that looks and feels like. So maybe you've been through this similar process or you're going through this, and I think this is kind of a lifelong process, so Mm -hmm. certainly I think anyone listening on the show could be really at any stage, and I don't know that there is a necessary complete end point where we could say we're finished, (laughs) but um, yeah, I guess I'd like to take a big step back and just start by talking about, you know, was there a moment for you that triggered awakening to begin? Yeah, I think it it, it stems, you know, from, from like, it starts from one side of the spectrum and then you meet the other side, but really it all started in massage therapy school when I started learning about, you know, all these Eastern philosophies and, and ways of, of learning, you know, ways of looking at life that really opened up my mind to, to something that I really didn't understand. And, but it was more of a feeling while going through massage therapy school, um, just, The ability to touch and be touched was really, really healing for me. Um, Growing up, it was just like sexual things that were where I felt that my sexual needs were like really like, I don't know, like it was repressed sexual urges that I was putting on myself that really were just ideas that I had given myself. And this ability to be loved and just to be nurtured and to be touched is really all that I needed. And, and I woke up to that idea there, you know, where I was just like, wow, you know, you're, this touch isn't sexual. Mm-hmm. Touch doesn't have to be sexual all the time. And a lot of these people, you know, can't pull out from that idea mm-hmm. of that. T- every, everything that has to do with touch has to be. And I get it, you know, society is just, that's where we're at right now. That's where men have their minds and that's where women have their their walls you know their their protection because unfortunately we we can't be like that with one another yet but hopefully within the process you know more people will wake up to the idea of how healing um touch can be um so it all it all started there it uh started in my holistic consciousness class where i i just started paying attention and started being more aware and um I started reading Lewis Hayes' book, You Can Heal Yourself. Mm. And that book was just like, it It honestly, it, it hit a lot of triggers. And that's what triggered the awakening was just like realizing the, what was missing, you know, realizing like, okay, like I, I want to do all these things and, and I want to help all these people, but I don't have the right structure to do it. I, I don't have the right settings. And, and I think about it as a camera, you know, if you don't have the right settings on the camera, mm-hmm. you're not gonna see the big picture. You're not gonna see its true beauty. Mm-hmm. And through, you know, balancing those energetic system, I was able to have a clearer outlook on life and what it really was. And, and, and it showed me my fears and it showed me my insecurities and, and I was able to sit with them for a really long time. I, I've, I've been healing and healing and healing and healing and healing like crazy. <laughs> because I want to, you know, I, I, I was married and, and I got divorced because I realized that I was projecting a lot of these things that I didn't even know I had, you know, they were just patterns that I picked up from, from my dad 
things that I picked up from my mom, things that I picked up from friends. And, and, and I realized at that point, through that awareness, you know, that's where it all starts, just through awareness of who you are, who you think you are. <laughs> you know, I was like, who, who do I think I am? Mm-hmm. Initially, you know, before massage therapy school, I was just doing personal training. And I was so devoted to it. I, I even, like, I wanted to start a business, and, and I did. And I, I left to New Mexico to, to work in the oil fields for six months to gather money because nobody was going to give me money. You know, I didn't have any credit. I didn't have any history with businesses or anything. So if I want it, I have to go get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I came back and I started that business. And then I felt like it was, it, it was really bad. I was just talking to one of the trainers about this. Where I'm like, you're scared of failing, man. I'm like, I was scared of failing too. And it took me five years to finally make that step. And when I finally went for it, I felt like the first week bad, like just on my face. And it put me like on this bad depression. I was like, the worst thing that could have happened, happened. And mm. that moment, like really, I had to step away from who I thought I was mm. and, and really pay more attention to myself and to my heart and to my emotions and to what they were telling me. I, I stopped ignoring, you know, I stopped running. I, I was tired and, and. I had to run faster, you know, from 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 the problems, and that, I think that's what led to that depression. I was trying to run away from that mm-hmm. failure, and it, it caught up to me. And I was tired when it caught up to me. It just mm-hmm. beat the shit out of me <laughs> when it caught up to me. And it, it was everything, you know. It was that. It was, you know, understanding that that I didn't have the appropriate male structure as far as like, you know building a business goes and like following through and what it means to fail and that, you know, failure is just a part of it. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, <laughs> not really having anybody, like I had mentors and everything, but as soon as my depression, like I literally, like I stopped talking to everybody. I, like my mentors, I didn't look for them. They didn't look for me. I didn't want to waste their time. I was just in a bad position. I, I told them I was sick, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, and I was healing, you know, and, and I just, I paid a lot of attention. I started listening to a lot of like philosophy and how, how, how thinking has evolved throughout the years and and I realized that that we've you know we get filtered our information our information is filtered here in, in, in the West and we only get fed what we we only get fed what we need to stay to stay in control you know so they can stay in control um, and a lot of people haven't woken up to that idea yet. And that's why I started my hidden potential. It's like, I want to show you what they're hiding from you through like these manipulative ways of acting that they're doing through Facebook and media. And, and that's where I'm at. Cause I woke up to that idea. I'm like, man, I have a hidden potential and, and it literally it's hidden from you. It's, it's, you know, it's not something you have to find. It's not, it's like, it was literally hidden from you purposely. Mm-hmm. So you don't realize your greatness but now it's time you know what i mean like it's <laughs> it's the awakening is happening and and this is this is how it's happening this is how it's unfolding through podcasts through just people sharing their experiences and realizing that it's kind of the same for everybody you know people wake up and they're like man like who, who am i who, who am i who have who have i been why do i react the way that i react you know and and is it the best way to react do i really consciously want to continue to live the way that i do you know, by continuing to live by default, mm-hmm. you know, just going through the motions instead of choosing to live by design, which is, you know, you get to design how you want to feel. And, and when you mm-hmm. feel something that you don't want to feel, you observe it and you try to understand why we don't run. I understood that. It's like, you don't run on, just face it, face it. And then you'll realize that it's not that bad. And mm-hmm. because that monster like gets gets fit with you as you're running with it, he's running behind you and he's just getting as much condition as you are. And that guy is just eventually, you know, you, you realize that he's, he's not, he's not going to stop as long as you do. <laughs> and then as soon as you stop, it's, the fear goes away and, and you realize that it's just false evidence appearing real. Mm. And, and that's what I realized that fear is because religion was never pushed on me and it, it took me down a path where I was, I was like, well, I'm an atheist. You know, I don't believe in anything. As I didn't understand what God was or what having a spiritual life was. Um, but now it's the only life I have. You know, it's mm-hmm. the only life I live. I live through spirit. I really do. And, and I wake up with purpose. Mm-hmm. And, and I wake up knowing that, that, you know, I went through my divorce because I knew that I had to pursue something. And, and I knew that, that it wasn't fair. 
you know, it wasn't fair for if you know that you're projecting all this shit to somebody else and you're not consciously choosing to take, you know, action to fix it. It was just so much, you know what I mean? Like for me, it was like things that I didn't ever understand. For me, it was it was nobody hit me. Nobody, nobody talked bad to me. I just got ignored, <laughs> you know, and and it left like a huge like void in me. And for, it came from my dad. Me and my dad, we had um, a bad experience where he, he was caught cheating. Not cheating. He was caught with messages that he just didn't want to fess up to. You know, everybody makes mistakes, I thought, at that point. But what I couldn't accept was just somebody giving up like that. Just somebody saying, well, you know, that's what I get for being a dumbass. And, and just somebody giving up on, on, on your mom. You know, like, this, this is my stepdad. And, and I'm like, this is, a, this is a woman that I'm going to love the most my whole life. Like, what do you mean? Like, I guess that's what I get for being, you know, like I didn't get it. And, and he didn't get it either. Mm-hmm. And it led us like to, to this role where we like lived in the same household and we would just ignore each other. Like we would look, we would walk past each other, not even look at each other to where before that we had like a really like cool relationship where like he was the friends of my friends, soccer practices would be amazing. You know, it was just, he was my support. He was my 50 and my mom was my other 50. So losing your 50, (laughs) you know, it, it, it leaves you. And, and I had to find a way to rebuild that 50 and it was through books and it was through like my spiritual journey and. You know, he's in, a, he's, in a, he's in a space right now where, where he needs to be. You know, he's in jail. <laughs> he, and he's learning. And I'm glad that he's getting the time to, like, think. And things just unfold the way that are, they're meant to. And I don't think anything just happens just because, you know, nothing happens by chance. Everything has a purpose and a meaning. And I think life right now is just where it needs to be. You know, I decided to to awake and I decided to like be open with the things that I'm doing with my mom and with my brothers and my mm-hmm. sisters and just I'm no longer hiding from myself. And and that allows me to present my authentic self to to people when I when I encounter others. And mm-hmm. I just love that. I love because it allows me to see other people's lights. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't see if you don't if you're not willing to show people your light, most of the time people won't be willing to show you theirs. And for me just walking around with that in mind, I, I just know that I'm like a lighthouse, you know, just, mm-hmm. I mean, people are looking for that right now. People are looking for lighthouses and you just gotta show them that you are, you know, sometimes they won't see it. Sometimes it's their own ideas and their own beliefs, but you really have to fall under the belief that you are a lighthouse for, for a lot of these people that are, that are looking for that. You know, they're looking for, for a way to understand, like, what happened? You know, why do I feel like this? Why, how did I gain so much weight? You know, why am I depressed? And, and it sucks, you know, this, this experience is dual, you know, and, and you, in order to experience the good, you need to experience the bad, and in order to, you know, sour and sweet, like, it's just, it's, it's very dual. And, and that, it took me a long time to understand, but now it's what gives me peace. It's just understanding the duality of life and, and understanding that like I had to go through all those bad things. I, I, I had to like this is I know this is my purpose and this is I'm in alignment with, with my assignments. And and I know that, you know, I'm I'm here to help people. And for that year that I wasn't working, that I I was I was doing commercial painting, I was doing air conditioning, I was doing tree trimming, tree tree artistry. <laughs> <laughs> tree artistry. Um, <laughs> And, and it was just hard work. It was hard work. And I was listening to podcasts, you know, like through all that time that I was working, painting, just listening to podcasts and learning about how people come to heal and just learning about really successful people and, and their failures and just putting myself in their shoes and, and just going through my emotion and realizing that everybody who's great has gone through great failures. And I was like excited by one point, like I was like, it's my first failure. You know, it's my first great <laughs> failure. And I understood it when I understood it like that. I was able to make a lot of peace with it, and it didn't hurt as much anymore. It actually didn't even hurt at all. It was just like it's it's the first step you took towards being better. You were brave enough to go through that and burn through that fire, and and now I see you know that I'm getting the results that I want. Things are manifesting faster. You know I'm here at Harvest. We get to teach her, and we, we we get to be a part of something that's really quite amazing. You know a wellness center is part of a community where people get to 
just a place where people get to come to 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 learn how to live a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. you know we're not just yeah go and do your thing you know it's like we're here no we, we tell them we're here to help you and we're here to support you mm -hmm. and i just love showing up to work and being able to be that open and that authentic into mm -hmm. helping people not knowing that you know like i was always into so into like against working for like big box gyms and everything i was jobless for like six months because because of it <laughs> until until you know harvest came along and and this is really the first place that i've really decided to work for um i've always just been really stubborn like i want to do it on my own i want to do it on my own i want to do it like, i was just stubborn 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 until i it, it just lined up, you know, and what happened happened with my dad and I was like, man, okay, well now I have overhead and, and I have to make a decision and I understood. I'm like, wow, like all of this happened. Now I'm here. Now I understand because at that point I was out of, I was pulling out of that healing journey and understanding that, you know, like he didn't know any better. You know, you never, you don't know how his dad treated him. Mm -hmm. You don't know how his dad's dad treated him. And you know, and you realize that it's a pattern and, and you realize that the only power you have is to either change that pattern or to continue it. And I chose to just change it, you know, and, and, I, and I don't hold grudges and I don't have a bad place for him. And we don't talk as often as, as, as we'd love to, I'm sure. But I'm sure it's because, you know, we're still doing a lot of healing. And I, sometimes people need to respect that. They need to respect the boundary and just give themselves the time to heal. Um, it's 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 this it's a repetitive story in our collective consciousness. This whole dad son thing, it it's what hurt. It's I don't know. Like it feels like almost like something they did purposely to like weaken us, as you know, to keep us in control. Like because in other parts of the world, it, that's not how it is. <laughs> you know. So now it's it's like okay, like are you gonna take control or are you gonna keep getting controlled? You know. And sometimes it's through your own emotions that you feel like you don't have control, but mm -hmm. in reality. It's just programming, programming that you have that, that you have the power to be, that you have the power to program something better through action and through, you know, building better habits. But it takes work. And, and a lot of people see, you know, overalls and dirt and they don't want to do the hard work. <laughs> but it's it is what it is. You know, it, and anything that you do is going to require hard work. You're, you're just going to decide whether you're going to work hard at complaining or you're going to work hard at working hard. <laughs> But either way, you're gonna work hard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there's just no way, no getting out of it. Or you can just, you know, go live in the forest and just have that life. But I think there's people that need to be saved, and there's people that need the messages that we're, you know, giving. And you get to be a part of that too. And there's nothing wrong with going one way or the other. But go one way and embrace it. You know, live it and, and be determined and live it fully. I, I'm, I've never been, you know, the the fifty percent guy. I'm either zero or I'm a hundred and fifty percent with you. Um, I just I don't know how to be mediocre. You know I don't know how to be fifty. I either don't want anything to do with you or I want to help you rise and I want to see your light and I want to see you maximize your full potential. And that's how people should be. You know that's how people should be. They really some people just need to stop wasting their time with people who don't get it yet. Because we need this awakening to like speed up, and, and we need the people who are awakening to hang out with the people who are awakening, so we can help more people understand and do more podcasts and do you know more video series and do more posting. Because people are posting, you know, but what kind of information is getting out there, and, and what what is getting fed into that collective consciousness? You know, are, are we gonna keep fueling the fire, or are we gonna decide to put it out? <laughs> you know, or are we. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, but I, I know where I'm going and what makes me feel good. And it's helping people and it's helping people break out of their own destructive patterns, their own destructive habits um, that they don't. Sometimes people, they don't know or simply nobody's explained to them that it's them, that they're the ones holding themselves back, that even though all these bad things could have happened to you, the end of the day those bad things happen to you in the past they're not happening to you right now mm -hmm. so why are you still pretending like those things are happening you know it's a whole new day it's a whole new moment in any moment i think you 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 have the power to say you know what no i don't i don't want to live in that skin anymore i don't want to live in those emotions anymore and that was me i knew that i needed a new skin a new avatar to to become the person that's able to come onto a podcast and talk about these things authentically 
and I had to I had to shed that old skin. I had to shed fears. I had to shed so many insecurities. I it's not easy, you know. But at the end of the day, it's like the hardest person that's gonna judge you is you. <laughs> if you can be a little easier on yourself and, and have a little bit more faith and again it's and really living through spirit has that you know that you you get to make things get easier because you're, living, you're not living through your ego you know you're not thinking that oh if I do that that's out of my person and who I am it's like you're living through spirit because that feels in alignment like what you're doing feels good and you're listening to your body you're building that that intuition you know you're developing it a lot of people aren't because they're just going with what the structure says for school. You know, they're going with what the structure says for the government or what the structure says from their parents. And it's tough. You know, a lot of people will follow that path and live very unhappy lives. I was happy that I found this, you know, at 24. That I found massage therapy school at 21 and like that I didn't get to add on more trauma, you know, mm -hmm. but I feel like it was for a reason. Like if I got saved the pain of going through all of that simply because you know, my purpose is to just, I was to suffer enough to be able to resonate with people who, uh, who lack that, that masculine aspect, which is really what I lacked. I had, I loved people, you know, like I carry myself like as this like feminine, um, like more feminine than masculine because I want to be more loving and more nurturing. But my masculine side was really out of balance because I didn't have that direction, and that ability to follow through because I just didn't have it. I, I, I didn't know where to get that structure from until... I read and listened to so many podcasts and just had mentors and and just learned, you know, and, and every opportunity is a good opportunity to learn as long as you're being present. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of a little bit of how my awakening happened through a massage therapy school and then it was so powerful that I got, that I got divorced, I honestly did and then it was like you fight against it you know you're like people are gonna see you and they're gonna think you're crazy people thought i was crazy people thought i was losing it i lost friends like it was it was painful um but now they're all back <laughs> you know and i don't like i don't tell them hey you remember that time that like you mm -hmm. you turned your back on me because you thought i was losing it mm -hmm. when i was just in like so much freaking pain mm -hmm. and and it sucks you know but it's that unconditional love that you learn to give people. It's like, nah, I still love you, dude, unconditionally. <laughs> I don't, I choose not to even hold you accountable for that. Like, you don't know me better. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you how it, it is to love unconditionally. You know what I mean? Like, you be there for each other. That's, that's the way that I was taught to love. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and just when I got married, just, falling out of that alignment and, and realizing that I wasn't carrying myself like that anymore and that I was carrying myself more through fear, that really put me down this road. Like it led me down to like having like schizophrenic days where like I was just so fearful. After my failure, like I didn't want to try again. And mm -hmm. after, you, and even though like I didn't want to try again, deep inside me, like my soul was like, we're freaking trying again, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because the only thing I could think mm -hmm. about was that even though I was painting, even though I was doing air conditioning mm -hmm. work, the only thing I could think about was going and trying again. Mm. I was just like burning within my failure, you know, or suffering, like thinking that I'm, I'm not probably not even a trainer, you know? What are you thinking? You, you can't even get a six. And I was under that, like, mentality that I had to be super fit and I had to be like a physique competitor to really be up there with people when in reality like the people that most thrive in this industry is the people who are authentic about helping people and and then just falling into that space everything came together like mm -hmm. clients people classes everything it's just like stop like mm -hmm. stop trying to pe feed people's egos and mm -hmm. start feeding their hearts mm -hmm. it's it's if the times are different, Juan, you know, it's not, it, we're, pa we're, we're, we're past 2012, remember? Like, it's different. You're more love-based and less ego-based. Mm -hmm. and, and having a healthy ego, you know, is, is, is now my ego knows its spirit. Now it identifies mm -hmm. with that. So now I can say to myself, you know, I, I have a healthy ego. And, and it's challenging at times, but honestly, it, I had... I had my mom. My mom telling me yesterday. She's telling me we. You need, you need to stop arguing. I'm like I'm not arguing. I'm clarifying a misunderstanding that you had. And she's like, you should have been a lawyer. And I'm like, <laughs> because I've understood 
how people mm-hmm. fight you, you know, how their own mm-hmm. programming fights you. And, and I love my mom so freaking much. But sometimes it's just like that I've learned to give unconditional love when trying to help her and, and then just realizing and putting myself in her position and realizing, you know, the tough life that she had and, and the nutritional habits that she had. We're trying to be like the sugar addiction, but she she didn't like she got fed food like she grew up poor. She got fed food that didn't taste too yummy. Mm-hmm. So then when she grew older, you know, she got into all these like amazing experiences with food to where now like food is an emotion mm-hmm. for her, you know, and, and now after this thing with my dad, we're like, hey, we can't fall into like this thing where we're like we're eating our emotions away. We can't. Let's talk. And that whole journey just like I'm like, I, I see my mom at a soul level now mm-hmm. and I'm able to like break away from looking at her as a mom. And I tell her, like, don't look at me as your son. Like, look at me as a soul and help me evolve. Like, mm-hmm. don't tie me into that. Because you tie me as a, you, you tag me down as your son and you're going to have certain expectations of ways that I want to act and things that you want me to do. And don't, like, let's grow together. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm so happy that she, she had me at 15 and then she had my sister and then she had my brother. And then she never got the opportunity to, like, really enjoy her, her, mm-hmm. her adult life. So now she's such an awesome person and such a loving person, and now she she gets to go and enjoy that, and that mm. fills my heart because I she deserves so much, and and a lot of women out there are the same, you know, they're they're fearful of like taking the first step, and and you know they want to tie down and control everything they can, and and sometimes you just you say it in a nice way. It's okay to not be in control. Sometimes mm. that's the control that makes you get the control. It's just let it go. What's the best way? <laughs> and she understood. She's like, yeah. Like, and, and now, you know, we're talking like, well, you know, when I get a boyfriend, I'm like, I get triggered. You know, I'm like, when you get a boyfriend. <laughs> so now I'm like, I realize that I have to break away from like, from my mommy, you know? <laughs> and a lot of people don't. It's funny because a lot of people will be like 40, 50, and they'll still have, you know, that tight up mommy relationship with themselves and it will cause problems in their relationship and, it's crazy, but I, I'm glad that I'm understanding life with a clear mm-hmm. lens and understanding that it's healthy. To, like, you need to break away from your mom. You need to break away from your dad, and, and you need to learn how to be independent, and you need to learn how to thrive. But you also need to come back and learn how to, well, how to, how to thrive with your tribe. Mm-hmm. So, you know, because that's what it is. Like, you, if it was meant for you to be experiencing this alone, you would be here alone. But it's not. There's a bunch of people go and make friends and have a bunch of cool experiences, um, and that's what I've been doing. You know, just I got a more living more consciously and just more full of love and more full of light and just trying to make my decisions be in alignment with what I'm trying to do. And, and life just feels purposeful. It, it it doesn't feel hard right now. It at 24 I can say that I'm probably the happiest I've. I've been in a long time. Mm. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing so much and so many intimate details on that journey because, yeah, it can be scary. I mean, I was in my early early to mid-20s when Mm -hmm. it started happening for me, and I think for me it was losing a really good friend at a young age. At 20, it was just like a wake-up call, like, what am I doing with my life, you know? It could end at any second. And I get this gift of life that, you know, my friend no longer had. And so to wake up and start going down that path, it could be really scary. But I love how you brought up, like, kind of allowing yourself to really dive in deep and just get lost in the podcast and the books and looking at the path of people who have been there. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially if you're surrounded by people that aren't in the same place and that aren't experiencing the same wake up or willing to kind of go down that scary path of seeing themselves and moving away from the ego because I think there's a lot of comfort there that's what we've known that's what like you said we've been fed and where we think we should be going and where we think we need to be and when we're talking to people in that same place they are also comfortable and so seeing you wanting to break away Mm -hmm. is hard and again they don't know any better but when that's your trust system and that's your security system you know, going against the conversations you're having with them. And, you know, it's really, really tough. Um, So I love that reminder of, you know, if you're in that place now and 
podcasts are, you know, listening to a podcast like this or something else that is shining a little bit of light, like stay in that. Mm -hmm. And that really can be a beacon of light and hope, I think, for a while. And it might, you might be in that place. I think after my first yoga teacher training, I was there for a good year and a half where it was just like fervent, soaking oh, up knowledge, God. everything I possibly could. But like you, I wasn't ready yet. Like yeah. I couldn't break away from my nine to five corporate job yet. I couldn't move away from what I spent four years in a college degree and thousands and thousands of years of debt later, you know, pursuing. I needed to stay in that for a little while while I developed on the side and while I continued down my own personal path of transformation. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to another podcast recently where she did, it was Yoga Girl, um, and she was talking about this path of transformation and how if you're still in the mess, figuring it out yourself, it's hard to teach from that place. So if you're still there, you probably can't break away and teach other people how to do it yet because you're still finding the healing. And of course, I do think it is still, you know, a journey I'm on and I'm certainly not there yet, but... I do think I can look back to five years ago, 10 years ago where I was and at least help people that are there. Mm-hmm. You know, I can see enough on the light of, okay, I did heal from losing a friend of mine. I, I have healed from past relationship issues. I have healed from things that were in my path a while ago. Um, and that's all we can do. You know, we can be in this place now and say, okay, like here's where I'm at authentically like I realize Mm. I have more to go and I'm not perfect but I also have done some healing and I feel like I'm on steadier ground and I'm in the path and I'm on the way to the light or whatever that is um, that I found spirit to some extent so I guess is there anything else you would tell someone that is kind of at those early stages of awakening and they're you know maybe scared or fearful or you know, any other words of wisdom? Yeah, I think um, you need to have at, at that point, I think the right term for it is subtle awareness because you're already like perceiving and receiving a lot of things. So just saying to have awareness might just like be like, oh man, you know, it might send you into that schizophrenic route that I ended up in for a few days. Um, so subtle awareness, just be calm and try to stay calm and try to observe as the things come in, you know, as the, your thoughts come in. Don't don't be absorbed by them. Observe as they pass and don't don't get, you know, don't get too tied up and ask more questions. You know, a lot of people don't talk enough to themselves. <laughs> and I know I just talked with the schizo thing. I know, but it's like, <laughs> talk to yourself. There's somebody listening. Mm-hmm. Talk to yourself. Um, ask questions. And if you're not comfortable talking to yourself then get comfortable talking to other people a lot of the times the people that aren't comfortable talking to themselves aren't comfortable talking to other people they're usually you know getting distracted playing video games you know drinking doing drugs sex you know so many different escapes it, it's it's not even it's not even funny anymore how how many different ways we can get distracted um but really you know down the spiritual road that's that's what you're here to do you know you're here to escape this um this idea and create your own you know you're here to escape this dream and create your own dream this is somebody else's dream you know like is it can you create yours can you break out of this this dream and, and create your own can can you love more fully you know can can you decide for yourself how you want to act because i feel like just with media you know we literally like through watching so many movies and so many cartoons and so many things We've literally have programmed in our brain like how to love, how to see sex, how to see marriage, how to see kids, and it's wrong. <laughs> it's so wrong. People need to go out and do some research, read a book. For me, you know what? I I can't like sit and read for too long. But what I can do is like just lose myself in an audio book, or lose myself in a podcast, and like or even while I'm working, like I don't listen to a lot of music anymore, mostly because I'm listening to things that help me, or or, or I will listen to music with audios that have to do with like philosophy or self-help things but I'm always just in this constant state of bettering myself and and it's not because I feel like I'm the worst person but it it's simply because I know that I have a lot to go and I have um, this is barely the start you know I'm only 24 and, and I'm an inventor and I've you know I've created things and I hope that my invention gets out soon and and it's it just you know all this path shed 
the light on who I am truly, and and I'm grateful for that. And I would have never, I would, I wouldn't do things differently. I would go through the same pain, you know, maybe twice the amount of pain to be able to recognize who I truly am, like 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 I recognize myself today, because I I see it, you know. It's there's you can't fool me. You can't tell me that I'm not because I felt it and I saw it and and I'm secure and you know and, and it's only through that security that you can lead through that authenticity it's when you know that you know <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah other, other than that subtle awareness have some sort of awareness and, mm-hmm. and watch watch those thoughts pass mm-hmm. don't don't be absurd don't be absorbed absurd mm-hmm. but yeah I love that become the witness become the witness Yes, you are not your thoughts. Exactly. They're part of you. They're a tool, but yes, you are bigger than that. Yes. So, what is your approach today to healthy, balanced living? Um, to healthy, balanced living, I try to move as much as I can. Um, I currently recently bought um, a what is this called? A gravel bike to ride mm. to work. Um, it's about 10 miles, so I'm working on building a habit to thank the earth um, for allowing me to participate in this experience. I, I felt, you know, I just had, had, I saw the bike online and I was, I just get intuition, you know, and and it, it, it's it's been fed. Ever ever since I, I remember when I when I got divorced and I was leaving her house and, and, and I was walking through the side, walking out of the side gate and I dropped something and I fall and I reach down to get it. And, but as I'm walking out of the gate, I, I'm thinking like, did I make the right decision? And something falls and I, 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 as I'm coming up, like a bird like just flies right behind my head, like speeding. And I get this thought, I say, you're making the right decision because you chose, your decision is based on love. So you made the right decision because your decision is based on love. And I just like, I walked, you know, like a tear fell out of it. And I just trust it, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's like, how do you not want to feel schizo when you're trusting the voices inside your head? You have to trust, <laughs> you know? Um, and, I've, and it's happened, you know, over and over. I think it's just, it's, it's, it's not weird. It's, that's normal. Weird is you getting distracted and ignoring mm-hmm. that. I think it's, that's what we need to break away from. This. We're, we're not the weirdos. The rest of the people are. <laughs> and that's what they need to wake up to. It's like, we're the normal people, really. Like, we're living life how it's supposed to be lived. Um, you guys are just, you know, a lot of people are just being led down the slaughterhouse. <laughs> like sheep, unfortunately. But, you know, we're here to do our part and, and try to help those people that want to be helped. It's really hard to make the horse drink when he doesn't, you know. But mm-hmm. you can definitely provide the opportunity if you can. Mm-hmm. Is there something you'd recommend anyone listening at home to try like a 10 minute tip, something today that they could do to feel a little more balanced? I think the thing that's helped me the most is just to be able to be present. Like if you can get 10 minutes, if you can get 30 seconds of like sitting down with yourself, it'll, it'll tell you where you're at and that's your starting point it's just you sitting and seeing oh man i can't sit with myself like if for me like i'm religious with the sauna and i use it several times a week and sometimes i say okay i'm gonna leave my phone and like when i'm leaving my phone I'm like this is gonna be bad because i'm gonna sit in that sauna in a dark little room for like an hour and i'm just gonna feel it you know i'm just gonna feel it and and that has allowed me to to really so many things like so so things that have to do with my marriage like I was sitting in the sauna the other day and and I like just start sobbing and pouring out because I get like this realization that like you you don't ever stop loving the person you love you just don't understand how to love the person they become and and that allowed me to to look at, at my past relationship with more love you know and, and knowing that I simply evolved one direction and she evolved the other and, and she was the perfect girl for that stage in my life mm-hmm. and, and that's fine and I can see her as that and I don't have to take anything away from that experience you know I don't, I don't have to feel bad because it didn't work out she, she was the perfect girl for that mm-hmm. stage in my life 
and she she taught me so many things as well um but you know in the end you have to move on to the next stage and push forward Mm -hmm. yeah i've heard some from some of my um healers that i've met in my life that vipassana silent meditation retreat is one of the most transformational things they've ever done so giving yourself that space just to release it you know for me it's a daily meditation practice but Mm -hmm. whatever it is if it's sauna if it's that if it's going to your favorite place in nature just to let yourself be for that 10 minutes or five minutes or like you said start small there's that's where so much enlightenment on your own self and where you're going and where you were and where you want to be is going to come and you start maybe hearing the truth come through to you yeah and and once you're ready for it it shows up and it doesn't mm-hmm. stop showing up it's insistent because it at, at this point it's it's that energy that's demanding to be heard now you know it's it's no longer whispering in your ear it's freaking screaming <laughs> it's screaming at you through through your phone you know it's screaming at like you it's just it's gonna become the norm eventually and, and we're just the pioneers of it and, and we get to pioneer this 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 moment and you know, for everybody that's out there, you know, in the in the wellness industry, you know, it's what did uh, Terrence McKenna he said? He was going to save the world. We're going to have to make a business out of doing it. Mm-hmm. So you know, all those wellness people out there, like, get smart. You know, get settled um, economically. You know, think about ways, creative ways that that we can help this movement evolve at a faster rate. Because if we don't, like, we're already at six million miles of trash in the ocean. Mm-hmm. You know, like what and all these other bad things happening in the world like if we don't get a grip we're gonna Mm. we're gonna lose we're gonna lose this fight and you know there's nothing wrong with losing but is it really a fight we want to end up losing i don't think so (laughs) is there anything else that you would like to share with anyone listening that yeah is on this path and journey give yourself the time to heal like it, whether you're in a relationship or whether you're single, give yourself a time to heal. Like it's self-respect. It's it's out of respect for you. It's out of respect for the person. If you love someone, if you think you love someone, if you think you love someone, give yourself a time to heal. Because a lot of you think you love someone, but you you don't. Not unconditionally. You you love them with conditions. You love them if they act and behave a certain way. You act them. If, you love them if they their beliefs are in accordance with yours. And that's not love. That's just business. <laughs> you know. So if you need to get out of your business and and into some more love, do it. Do it. It's it's worth it. It pays off tenfold. True love, there's nothing like it. Unconditional love, I'm just barely starting to experience it and I'm, I live in bliss every day because I have people that give it to me and I have people that I can give it to. And I, you just need a few people. You don't, you don't need a whole, whole crew. You don't need two or three people that are going to give you unconditional love and that you're able to be. And it was through that unconditional love really that I was able to see truly who I am and because and I was able to show it to them and I was able to see, yep, this is it. I'm here. Welcome home. (laughs) Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you. Thank you again to Juan Valtiera of My Hidden Potential for being on the show and for sharing your story with the world. And thank you at home for listening. If you enjoyed this week's episode, be sure to subscribe to the Yoga for Balance podcast wherever you listen and help the show grow by leaving a star rating and review while you're there. You can also find links in show notes at vintantra.com, V-I-N-T-A-N-T-R-A.com. Thanks and until next time.